Hi everyone, um, I'm Carolina and I will be working on some arts and crafts activities with you over the next few weeks. We're coming up to Christmas time, uh, so I thought that it would be nice to look at arts activities, crafts activities that are related to Christmas and uh, that will help you get into the Christmas spirit in this um, gloomy times. So what we're going to do today, we are going to prepare some Christmas ornaments using a relief technique. We are going to make a salt dough, but you can use clay or a polymer clay if you wanted to, whatever you have at home. I just thought that salt dough would be a nice and easy and cheap way of creating a material that you will be able to work into and everyone has flour and salt and water at home. Um, so let's get cracking. Flour, salt, water, rolling pin and glass, branches, large bowl, nail varnish and paintbrush, paint. We are going to make a salt dough now. I have attached the recipe for salt dough to this workshop so you can download it uh, to make your own salt dough. Um, I have measured up 250 grams of flour, 120 grams of salt and 125 milliliters of water. And I'm going to put so uh, flour and salt into a bowl together. I'm gonna mix it nice and I'm gonna slowly start adding the water. Mix it until it's all together in a nice dough. I think my dough is a little bit too dry. Perhaps it depends on the kind of flour that you use. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a little bit more water. I'm just gonna add a little bit right now. Not too much, because I don't want my dough to be too runny. Okay, so this is our salt dough ready. I am now going to remove it from the bowl and squeeze a little bit more down here on my worktop. I am going to clean the area. See, it's nice, soft, but not sticky. What I'm going to do now is sprinkle some flour on my worktop. So whilst I'm rolling the dough, it will not stick to the surface. You can make a ball or you can just flatten it out a little bit like I did. Okay, I'm going to use my rolling pin and I'm going to make the dough flat. So my dough is nice and flat now. It is about half a centimeter thickness, as you can see. Don't make it too thin because you don't want it to break when it's dry. To cut out my ornament, I will use a glass. So I'm gonna cut the circles. And the rest of dough you can make into a bowl again and use it later. So I've got my three little circles here. I'm going to put them on the side. I'm going to spread the flour again to make sure that my dough doesn't stick to anything. Okay. And um, as you've seen on the pictures before, uh, and as I mentioned before, I'm going to try and make a a relief uh, into the dough. So I've prepared some Christmas tree branches. I had some old Christmas tree branches in my shed. 
I also went into my garden and picked a few floral pieces that I really like. which I thought could be a nice relief. You can see they have nice patterns in them and will produce hopefully a nice, nice uh, relief on my sort of ornament. So I will arrange my branches now in the way that I want them to sit on my ornament. I think this should work well. I'm going to take my roller, uh, rolling pin, I'm going to take my rolling pin and just roll it gently up and down, just very, very gently because if you, if you make your ornament thin, you don't want to break them through. And then you pull, pull it off quite gently. I have, I have a piece stuck in there, which I will try to take out. Here we go. And you can see this worked quite well, nice and Christmassy. And we'll make a nice ornament on, uh, on the Christmas tree. You can make coasters um, for underneath your glass for here. You can then, when you bake them, you can put them on the table, paint them, put them on the table and they will make nice coasters as well. You can make them for people for their Christmas presents, nice and cheap and uh, quite pretty, I think. So to put it on the Christmas tree, we will need to make a little hole in somewhere in our um, ornament to cut um, a bit of rope or a thread through um, so we can hang it up. And to do that, I'm going to use a wooden chopstick, uh, but you can use anything uh, that you have at home that is quite thin and round. You can also use a little bit of a branch from outside. Um, so I'm going to push this through just where I feel that I had the most space and as you can see there is a hole here now um, and after we bake it, um, we'll, it it will harden and we'll be able to hang it up. Right, I'm going to put that one in the middle uh, here right now and I am going to make another one for you. And these are our three ornaments that I'm going to bake prepared. Okay, we have made our sculptures now and they are in the oven baking. So I will tell you a little bit about the relief method whilst we waiting for them to get ready. The relief sculpture has been used by artists for centuries, um, starting in prehistorical time through ancient uh, art. Uh, you might be familiar with these uh, from ancient Greece, um, and they are still used uh, nowadays by many, many artists. The relief sculptures are usually made by adding material onto the background and not what we did today by indenting um, things into the material. Uh, so what we've done today is actually called counter relief where you press things in so the sculpture outlines are indented into the material and don't stick out of the material. Most people are familiar with um, relief process because we, uh, most of us, uh, use it every day and they are all our coins where you have things uh, pressed onto the material and then areas that show in the image stick out of the background. Our ornaments have now been baked and they are ready to be decorated. Um, as you can see, they are nice and hard. 
and as I explained to you before, it depends uh, what you want to do with them when you bake them. Set your timer and temperature to achieve white ornaments. Um, you need to bake them for a long time on a very, very low temperature. So about 80 degrees for three hours. Or if you want them to be brown, dark, um, set the temperature to 200 or 180 degrees. Uh, but for a shorter period of time. And if I were you, I would just observe them so you don't burn them. I will um, start decorating them now. Um, I have chosen to use nail varnish. Uh, I've prepared quite a few colors here. Um, I don't know which one I will use yet. I will maybe start with... Ooh, a golden golden shiny one maybe let's see how it will work and I will start with this ornament so I like to use a fine paintbrush even though your nail varnish comes with the brush already but it's usually quite thick so I just pick a small paintbrush that I will be able to go in to my ornament with fine details. I have prepared nail varnish remover instead of water uh, to clean my brush. So I will start painting. Okay, so our first ornament is ready. Uh, I will probably go around with either clear varnish or a very light colored one. But first I'm going to clean my brush so the varnish doesn't dry on it. Mm, yes, I think I will add a shiny light color one oh, this looks much better as you can see it's got this nice glittery glow to it and I will wait for this side to dry and I will paint the other side with this nice light color glittery nail varnish We have completed two of the lighter ones. They look very nice and sparkly. And I will attempt to paint the darker one now to just see the difference. I will use white nail varnish to do that. And our last one is ready. I really like all of them. Perhaps the dark one a little bit more. I hope you enjoy painting yours. And don't forget you can use normal paints or any other paint, watercolor paint, acrylic paint or poster paint, any paint that you have at home. You can also use pens and marker pens um just be creative and it will look amazing so everything is done the ornaments are ready and they are looking beautiful and i really hope you enjoyed the workshop and you will join me for another fun activity next week